Hello everybody and welcome back to the Weeb Family Basement. We are the Weeb Family. We're a lot like your family, except for we read manga together. It's another release day. We're here. We're here to talk about some manga. And I think this one's going to be a little spicy. We will... Uh, We'll, well see. Not not spicy content, but spicy content. This, this is this con. This genre is where we disagree a lot on. Yeah, but before we get to the spice, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel, like this video. Just stop what you're doing and go give the like button a swift kick in the nuts. And uh, if you need to, uh, if you need even more of your Weeb family fix. Make sure you follow us on the socials, mostly Instagram. I technically have a Twitter. And there for a while, I was like trying to like kind of post some exclusive stuff you on were? Twitter. Yeah, I was trying. Didn't even tell it me that. Didn't, didn't tell anyone that. Didn't go. Well, I use it like so infrequently. Like I mostly just tweet out here the new shows. Occasionally, I'll tweet something extra over there, but it's pretty rare. Like, I'm just bad at navigating the app. I, I am old. I am a 40-year-old man. I have no business being on Twitter. Well, you probably shouldn't but, even be uh, on Instagram. Probably We should not. just be on Facebook. We're that old. Yeah. We're, we're so old that we should only be on... I think it's literally a crime that we're on <laughs> Instagram. So, nobody tell the authorities. So, uh, I guess with that all the way, is a quick introduction. Probably the fastest we've done in a while. Um, let's get to the well, sub. Also, no daughter today. Yeah, no daughter. Look, it's the school year. She is taking an AP course, and she is just swamped with homework. Yeah. Like, actually, if you are high school age or you graduated high school in the last five years, please in the comments tell us how many hours per night you did. Oh homework. yeah, she's like doing homework almost from the time she gets home from school to when she goes to bed, and she's right. going to bed at like eleven. And, and I'm it's like, what such the heck? a and it's such a contrast because like her school load doesn't seem that much different than when I was in school, mm -mm. which granted was like twenty years ago, but like I almost never did homework. Now daughter has way better grades than I ever did, but like. Uh, they, in English class, it'd be like, oh, you need to read The Great Gatsby. And I'm like, fuck you. I ain't reading, I'd be like, I, I read a chapter. Uh, Actually, this true story, very good. true story. So I think I've told you before that I almost failed uh, 11th grade uh, literature, which was American literature. And uh, it's because like one semester we had to read The Great Gatsby and like I just didn't read it. And one of the essay questions was like, what is the symbolism of so-and-so's car in The Great Gatsby? <laughs> and I literally wrote about, like, who cares about that dude, dude's car? Let's talk about this dude's Dodge and how sweet it was. And <laughs> I wrote a whole, et like, I got an F on the paper. I mean, I'm not a sure. fan of The Great Gatsby, so. Yeah. So, I do remember when you went back to college, literature classes were the ones you were most afeard of. Yeah, afeard of? Yeah. Yeah, so... <laughs> Luckily, I didn't have to take a proper lit course. I had to take two essay courses, yeah. which I did surprisingly well in. But it's because I related it to math. I want to give everyone the secret to writing a good essay real quick before we Related talk to over. something that you know. Yeah. Uh, I was a math major in college, and I, found, I cracked the formula to writing a good essay. And here is that formula. You need an introduction paragraph with a thesis that outlines plots one through n you do you write a how, paragraph how on is this one through cracking n, the code like this is what they teach you and then the conclusion so that's like, like all you need yeah yeah that's the secret to writing a good essay <laughs> the secret that everybody knows who writes an essay but i'm relating it in math terms you know for but also relating it to something that you know yeah metaphor metaphorically yeah makes it better yes and so uh speaking of stem fields Let's talk about the manga we're here to talk about, which is uh, Planetess by Makoto Yukimura, mm -hmm. also of Vinland Saga Vinland fame. Vinland Saga. This is what most people know him for doing, yes. is Vinland Saga. And so uh, I've had these books for about, I swear I've had these for a long time. You had it way before I ever got interested in yeah. Vinland Saga. And I actually had no idea they were the same creator. Mm -mm. Like, 
I just randomly found it out on uh, Instagram when someone posted like the two together, and I was mm-hmm. like, oh, those are the same. Those person. are the same person. Yeah, and it was like at, well after we had both. Yeah, and we never put two and two together, so uh, we're gonna do our normal review format, which is we're gonna give an elevator pitch of what the series is about. We're gonna give a numerical rating one through ten on what we thought about it. And then we go into the part that everyone dreads, and the reason why no one watches our review videos is... Then we discuss it. Because they're worried about spoilers. Yeah. But don't worry. Spoilers are going to be clearly marked. Yeah. So, uh, I'll just go ahead and do the elevator pitch, if that's okay, unless you really wanted to do it. No. Look, this is just slice of life in space. We follow the crew members of a ship called the Toy Box... It, where we focus on uh, Fee, who's the captain of the ship, Yuri, who's kind of like the first officer, senior most worker, and then uh, Hachi Rota, who's like the Hachimaki. Hachimaki. No, I, thought, no, Hachi... I think they call him Hachimaki, yeah. but I think his name is Hachi Rota. It is. That's his nickname. Oh, okay. is yeah, Hachimaki. It's Hachimata. Um, so. That's basically what it's about. They are debris collectors in space. It takes place in the 2070s. Essentially, we've put, as a planet, Mm -hmm. so much junk into space that the fear is is like these little bits are going to run into spaceships. And so they're collecting all the debris as much as they can. I was trying to think of a metaphor to explain this to people because... This is a little bit of a hard science fiction. Maybe it's a semi-hard science fiction. I mean, you could think of the way the oceans are right now, except that they're... No, no, no. The debris that's in the... I'm trying to talk about, like, people might not understand. If they're not familiar with science and physics, they're just like, okay, what good... Like, okay, you got to clean up some screws in orbit. How much damage is a screw going to do? And and I came up with the perfect metaphor. Okay. If you look at a bullet that's fired from a gun, Mm -hmm. like, it's super tiny. And you, it weighs like almost nothing. And I could throw it at you, whatever. You'd just be like, stop it. it. Yeah. But fire it from a gun when it's going like a thousand feet per second or whatever stupid. All the gun nuts are going to correct me now. But like you fire it from a gun and it's going so fast that that little mass like will kill you, right? That's, and like, yeah, like you might have a tiny hole, but it'll go out the back right. and it's all. Exactly. Yeah. And Small, even small debris in space is moving so freaking fast, like thousands of miles an hour, that it'll just yeah. go right through. Steel. So my comparison yeah. was the ocean. Yeah, the ocean yeah. is full of debris, but it's not moving at a speed that's going to wreck a boat. So while right. it's annoying and we should we should clean it up, right? It's there's not the fear of it's the debris that's in the ocean mm-hmm. is going to destroy a ship. It's not going to sink the Titanic. No, <laughs> right? You got to have an iceberg. For yeah. That. So, I mean, that's basically what it is. I mean... Well, they keep talking about, like, robin egg size or, you know, little mm-hmm. golf ball size things hitting a ship and just, like, putting these huge dents right. with on these ships. Yeah. So... Um, and humans have pretty much colonized space. And, and, again, it's... There's no central plot, per se. That's why I'm calling it a... Sl- there, there's running themes. Don't no, get there's me a wrong. central plot. But there's no, like, conflict that we're building up to... It's not like the Frieza saga where like, okay, there's this. No, there's no battle at the end. No, I know that. Like we're, we're kind of getting into the discussion territory. No, but you're saying that there's no overall plot. The overall plot is, yes, it starts out with the captain, which Mm -hmm. I feel like was a weird place to start because Mm -hmm. your main character is uh, a Hachirota Mm -hmm. and the main plot is him like, discovering like why his need to mm-hmm. leave the earth what what it, where is his need to leave the earth comes from i guess but there's all kinds of things in yes between. there's other things going on I, but I, that's the overall like okay what, well, can we can we compromise on this it's not quite episodic no it's not but episodic. it's not quite full-on epic where we're laser focused on one thing I mean, yes, they do okay. do roundabout things yeah. and hit other things. Like, each person kind of has their own arc. That's why I'm saying, I mean, I like, guess there's a, if you want to call it an ensemble cast or whatever yeah, like okay. that. Yeah, okay. So, let's start getting into the spice. Let's let's get to our... Our rating? Our ratings. Okay. I'm going to go first, just because I want to see go how... Ahead. 
We normally don't talk. We try really hard we not to talk. We haven't really talked about this, no, but we no, already but... know that, generally speaking, you like space stories. Right. And generally speaking, I am not a fan of space stories. Right. I won't say that I dislike them, but they're not my go-to but story. But I, I think our gap was very apparent, like, even trying not to. Yeah. Trying to save the heat for the camera. <laughs> but uh, Now, I did enjoy this. Uh, I liked it a lot. But I also don't think it's the best sci-fi space thing ever mm. uh i'm gonna give it a seven and i think the main thing that held it back for me was that the book struggled to find its tone and what i mean by that is uh you got a lot of hard science fiction kind of stuff you got a lot of serious uh interpersonal relationships but then you get some slapstick comedy in there that kind of goes beyond comic relief and just kind of jars the whole thing. And I think some of those instances took me out of it. But overall, I thought it was solid. I think a, a, me giving something a seven is pretty good. Definitely has a place in our collection. I could see myself rereading it again in the future. I would definitely recommend it to sci-fi buffs. It's definitely a sci-fi for yeah. people who like sci-fi. Okay, so here we go. I want to see how far away we are. <sighs> It's a four. Really? I, I thought you were going to give it like a three or a well, two. Well, okay. So she, she kept saying the whole week, oh, this is boring. I have to read boring. this boring book. It is so boring. There are, okay, so the reason why I give it a four mm -hmm. is because some of the themes, this is the reason why I don't think it's episodic or sci-fi life. I feel like there are themes in it. I think we feel mm -hmm. like there's overarching themes. Uh, but I feel like those themes are actually covered better in Vinland Saga. Mm -hmm. um, there's actually a a part in it where I was like, oh, if this all this buildup is leading to this, this is really good. But then I feel like it dropped it. And I was like, oh, well, I guess they're not moving forward with that anymore. So, but I did find it really boring because I have no interest so in... So boring, you found it. I have no interest in fake science fiction like it just trying to make it feel real but then i'm just like it doesn't like i guess it feels real but then i'm just like well how do i i have a problem okay this is my personal problem with sci-fi if we're focusing on getting into the nitty-gritty of how the sci-fi works of how the mm. scientific thing i don't care i just don't care and i feel like any like most sci-fi writers get really caught up in how does their science fiction work and i'm just like more than likely this is not going to happen so why am i focusing on things that are not going to happen like if you want to give me a general idea of like because part of the plot in this is they want to go to jupiter i'm like okay a space mission to jupiter i can get behind that because that's something people want to do but i just and like the the environmental stuff was also interesting but I'm just like, the way they just, I would have rather heard, read a story about someone desperately trying to clean up the ocean, an actual problem that we actually have, rather than coming up with all these reasons why, hey, we need to make sure to clean up space because space, no, rather than no, cleaning have, up Earth. They have reasons, but I, I, I want to save it until spoilers. <sighs> I just, there was, I just felt like there was so much like, but I think it's just funny. There was sidesteps. There were so many, like you said, there were sidesteps. I felt mm. the thing is, I felt there was an overarching kind of story mm. with Hachimaki and his. I guess I'm going to use the word trauma, but that's not the mm. right word. No, it's not the right word at all. Actually, I'm just going to call the boy emo. The boy is just emo. He is a touch emo. And for sure. I was just like, get over your emo ness. This is not interesting. Like, everybody has. And that's another thing with space stories. It seems like every space story is like, ooh, look at my insignificance in the world. And I need, or because I'm so tiny. And I'm like, okay. Like, I, I'm like the lady in the last. No, you just really roll your eyes at existentialism, comma, nihilism, comma, and even worse, existential nihilism. Like, you like you just hate those philosophical I, but No, no, it's not that I hate it. It's like I totally understand it, but at the mm -hmm. same time, get over it. Like, what are you going to do? You either mm -hmm. kill yourself or you move on. That's that's how you deal with those things. Mm -hmm. And so reading a story about that... That is what the philosophers say. Exactly. So 
there you are, kill yourself or move on. And typically with a happy story, you move on and he moved on. See, I feel like you're really coming at this with the anger of a two or a three, but you gave it a four. I gave it a four because there were, part, like, when he got over his emoness, like, that mm. whole, like, are we going to get into, like, talking about stuff? Um, are we spoiler alert now? Hmm. Are we? Yeah, I guess so. Okay. <laughs> Do you have anything else you need to say before I we go spoiler? I thought I did, but then you unleashed the beast and then I forgot, so... <laughs> Okay, right now, we're cutting it off for spoiler-free. It is now spoiler time. It is spoiler time. And if you uh, hang around at this point and you get spoilt, it's your fault. It's so, your fault. There you go. It's your fault. Okay. You know, I can't believe you're saying that they go into a lot of the details on the technology because I don't think they did, to be honest. And I feel like I've read a lot of other space exploration stuff where they get even deeper into the hard yeah sci-fi. you won't see me reading that no i you probably won't see me reading it either because what, what's my number one complaint about ghost in the shell is that he like jerks off too much I didn't to even, his own technology like with ghost of the shell i would just skip pages because i'm mm. like i don't want to read this i don't mm. care this right. is stupid yeah and so i was almost to the point with that like i don't and like you could say yeah it's not that deep into the science mm-hmm. but as soon as you like the parts i like the best were the parts that you probably like the least where it's just slice of life stuff where mm-hmm. you're like interpersonal relationships like i was gonna say the part that i was liking the best is like he meets this Ten- girl Tanabe. yeah and he falls in love with her and it's that whole scene where he's reaching peak emo peak nihilism and she and I, I say this about a lot of like Japanese mm-hmm. comics and manga. Like, just she hugged him. Like, mm-hmm. there's so little physical contact in some of these things. Like, you just hug each other. Mm-hmm. You need physical contact with a person so they're gonna bring you out of your like nihilism of like ah because people people help you get you out of your nihilism. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying nihilism isn't a thing that people go through, but I just don't care to hear about it. And so when she pulled him out of that. That was the most interesting part to me. But then it was like, nope, I'm still going to Jupiter. Like, I, it's almost like he didn't learn anything about himself. He's just like, kill yourself or move on. I'm moving on. Well, I, I'm going to surprise you. I actually did like this stuff with him and Tanabe. But I guess I had a slightly different take. Yeah, he was having his existential crisis. But it wasn't about whether or not to go to Jupiter. He was just so laser focused on going to Jupiter that nothing else mattered, including human life. But when he falls in love with Tanabe, he's like, no, I still have the desire to go to Jupiter, but now I have the desire to come back. I mean, yes. And I guess that's the overarching story that you Mm. kind of skimmed over is that Mm. what's the purpose of, I guess, what is the purpose of exploration and travel and everybody else was telling him it's to come back and he couldn't grasp that concept. Mm-hmm. It's like the purpose is to go and see, but then to come back. And you know, I know you're dogging on the existentialism and all that, and me and you have had many a discussions about that. But I guess here's what I will say, giving some charitability to the characters. I think about the ocean or like the Great Lakes, because we live in the Great Lakes region. Like I've actually no, I have been to the ocean. Never mind. Um, it's one thing to kind of see the ocean on TV, to see it in books, manga, or whatever, but there is definitely a difference of scale being there in person. Like I said, I mostly just remember this from the Great Lakes and not the Pacific, which is kind of where I, uh, the ocean that I've been to, or no, I guess we were near the Atlantic when we went to Maryland that one time, but whatever. My whole point is seeing that on the TV or whatever versus being there in person and just as far as your eye can see blue water, you know, that's just definitely a different experience and you would definitely have a different emotional reaction. So like, it's easy to kind of be like, yeah, the vastness of space, but like when you're there and just everything as far as the eye can see is black. Okay. So when you look at it in terms of individual experience, I think 
when an individual experiences something fast, like the mm -hmm. ocean or Grand mm -hmm. Canyon or some natural phenomenon that's just more than what you would expect, mm -hmm. every individual is going to have, I would hope, I mean, it seems like a natural human reaction to have some kind of emotional mm -hmm. element to that. But I just feel like it's such a trope when it comes to space that I'm like, what's new about this? What's new about mm -hmm. having an existential crisis about seeing and comprehending space? Oh, no, I don't think... I agree. There was nothing unique uh, about that. To me, the uniqueness came into the uh, background with the environmentalism. Like, I didn't say Faye's this... story's more interesting fee. in that sense. Or fee. 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 But, well... I didn't correct you during the elevator pitch segment, but like um, you're talking about how um, they should fix the problems on earth, like clean up the oceans, clean up pollution and blah, blah, blah. This is actually in a dystopian earth that you don't even think about, but like everyone's acknowledged like earth is fucked. Like we, we live there. It, it's okay. No, to my, live on, okay yes. But like, yes. We've so already, we as humans have mm, ruined the earth. I would rather mm, have a story about, fixing the earth and saying, mm. oh, the earth is screwed. I guess that means we need to go out to space. Well, they got to go out to space to get the resources because, that, because they've already taken them all. Because that's earth. almost conceding the answer of, or the, mm. the question of we're definitely just going to ruin the earth and there's no way to fix it. So mm. the only answer is space. And I just, I hate that answer. Well, I think you took the wrong message. Like, first, first of all, let me, uh, one of the things that I really loved about the scenes on earth because it's super subtle, like how much they ravage the earth. Oh, there's trash everywhere. Yeah, there's trash yeah. everywhere. Like you'll see Hachiroda on the beach with his brother, like launching rockets. There's trash. There's just on trash the everywhere. Yeah. But like the environmental message I took was, was that we need to fix things on earth because there are, there are space terrorists running around and their primary message is, yeah, you're going to go to Jupiter because you want to extract the natural resources, but all you're going to do is extract the natural resources, and then what? What next? You're going to have to go but to I don't Saturn. But do I don't that. even like the how he ended it with the the space terrorist because the space terrorist mm. saw uh, Hachimaki be like, "Oh, I finally understand what it means to uh, appreciate other humans, and I understand that I need to come back uh, because mm. that's what it's about." So the terrorist was moved and decided not to try to look, terrorize look, anymore. Look, I'm, I'm not, like, what? What is this? That was a lame listen, ending listen, to listen. that. There's a reason why I only gave it a seven, not an eight <laughs> or a nine. I, I agree with you that some of the stuff really struggles. But I'm just saying, like, I took the message of humans are awful. Mm. And instead of being sustainable, we're just like, uh, go to the next thing. Go to the, like, let me get a little personal here. And I think Do I want you to get personal? I think it'll be fine. We, we can just cut it out in post. <laughs> okay. Like, I am bad with money. Well. Okay. And like. I mean. Instead of. And instead of being like, hey, why don't you learn to like um, use money more wisely, save a little bit, be a little more sustainable. No, nah, just get a job with more money. Just, just more. I mean, that's. That's the answer they're going for. Yeah, and that's what. So I took a different message from it than you, but well, again, I, I don't okay, think. Okay, so taking a different message, right? Mm -hmm. I've read Vinland Saga first, yeah. right? And the whole time I was comparing the two, sure, what course. I consider main characters, yeah. because they both, in my opinion, mm -hmm. have father issues comparisons. Sure. So his father was an amazing astronaut. Is did an it, amazing. He's still alive. No, yeah, yeah. is amazing astronaut. Yeah. Uh, he did a trip to Mars. He's still alive compared to this, where his father has right. died. Um, and they're on the crew to Jupiter. They're together. on the crew to Jupiter together. So, I do feel like there's a an element of I have to live up to my father's ideals in this. Mm -hmm. But instead of getting in Vinland Saga, he's trying to figure out his father's ideals on his own because his father mm -hmm. isn't there anymore. Whereas in this story, his father is there kind of being like almost knocking his son upside the head being like, why are you having an existential crisis? You can see my relationship with your mother. She, we have a relationship where she, we love each other and she knows that I always come back to her no matter how many times mm -hmm. I fly out into space, which is he grew up with that, yet somehow he didn't see that Mm -hmm. With his father and mother right in front of yeah, him. Yeah, and it makes so much sense that his mother was so horny for Yuri 
when Yuri came over there because, like, her husband's always gone. He is always gone. He's always gone. Well, and there's a huge age gap between him and his brother for an obvious reason. Yeah. Because she didn't see him for X amount of years. Right. So, but whereas I think in this, I feel like the character grows more because he has to do it on his own. Mm -hmm. And obviously he goes through the whole, like, I'm killing everyone phase and he has Mm -hmm. to then do that whole redemption arc of, like, I... Because, like, whereas he's... Uh, Thorfinn is literally killing people because he just doesn't care. He talks about people like, I don't care and I would sacrifice other people. Mm. It doesn't matter. But he doesn't. He never actually kills anyone. Mm. You know, even though the the representation of that is the terrorists are killing people. And he's like, I don't care. I don't care if the terrorists blow up a million ships before I get my ship to go to Jupiter. I'm going to Jupiter. Whereas other people were saying, wait, like if people are going to keep dying because of these terrorist plots... Maybe we shouldn't be going. I mean, like, aren't, mm. aren't lives more important than your uh, aspirational uh, idea to go mm. to Jupiter? Because his idea of going to Jupiter isn't to go there for the real reason, which is resources. His is just like, I want to go to Jupiter. And like you said, like, the ship should have been, like, plastered and named by the corporation rather than some other name. Because it's like, the underlying message is corporations are going to go out into space to mm-hmm. get resources because yeah. we've destroyed all of our resources on Earth. And, and like any good sci-fi dystopian, there is a megacorp that's super shady with a shady CEO. And maybe we'll get to him in a minute. I want to circle back to uh, Goro, which is... Uh, the father. The father. I actually really like the story that when he was, he was on Mars when Hachi Rota was born... And I think it's... I like that story, too. Yeah, I thought it was cute that uh, they're expecting their first child, Goro and his mom. I forget his mom's name. But uh, he's on Mars when uh, Hachi is born. And they have a a phone call, and she's just like, okay, we are not naming our kid uh, Rokuro, which means, like, sixth child. Um, cause Goro means fifth child. And so he, he kind of has this moment. He kind he kind of has his own little existential crisis. And then while playing baseball on Mars, he has this revelation that it, it hits him that he's like a father and that he has a son and blah, blah, blah. And he's, he's like, well, I guess I got to think of a name now. And because his local baseball team won their eighth straight, uh, thing, he decided to name it Hachi Rota, which means eighth child. And <laughs> you just skip one. It's <laughs> two. Skip two. two. And then what's even funnier is that uh, Hachi's brother is named Kyuta, and Q means nine. So he's just like eight <laughs> and nine. Right? And, it, and it's so much his character. His character is so lackadaisical and a Bruce Lee level martial artist for reasons, which for I. Reasons. That's where I talked about the tone that I didn't really like that, especially the stuff with his father gets a little too comedic. It's very Jar Jar Binks-esque in my opinion. Okay. So I have a question. Yeah. Going to switch to something else in his yep. silly, in my opinion, existential mm-hmm. crisis. Mm-hmm. Okay. So when he's working really, really hard and mm-hmm. training and all this kind of stuff, mm-hmm. he starts having visions of himself as an astronaut. Yep. Right? Yep. In my opinion, understandable that, you know, mm-hmm. you're, you're representing this crisis he's having yeah. by Inner conflict. talking to himself, sure, kind sure, of. Sure. Then it switches to a cat. Yeah. Why? Well, because he saw the cat get run over, which was sad, and it limped off. So I think the cat represented death for him. So the cat was the stand-in for, like, the Grim Reaper or... I mean, I get that. Okay, I understand. He saw the cat get hurt, and then it finally dawned on him, things die. Mm -hmm. Which, okay. Well, Uh, come on. There's a difference. You definitely hit that stage in life where you're young and you think you're invincible, and then you have a few health scares as you get older. I suppose. I think that's normal aging. Sort of like, I didn't even mention this, like, I've had that experience of, like, you're just a young guy playing baseball on Mars. Not that part, but, like... It definitely hits you from going from being uh, being what someone guess, is expecting to, holy shit, I'm a dad now. I guess, you but know. I feel like the transition from him talking to a representation of himself to mm-hmm. him talking to a dead cat, mm-hmm. just, 
I don't know. Well, I guess he came to terms with himself, and now he had to come to terms with mortality. Uh, all right. I mean, I guess. Look, I'm, just... I'm not. Look, okay. I'm not saying look, it's the strongest those, writing. Okay. There's a reason I gave it a seven. I under. I understand. Okay. Nine. Okay. Yeah. I understand. Coming to terms with self, coming to terms mm-hmm. with death, it just seemed very jarring. Uh, I mean, maybe. I look. I. I didn't like the cat stuff that much either. I just went with it. It's fine. Actually, as the cat stuff went on. I liked it a little more because they almost did the cat representing death with mm. um, Tanba. Mm, Tanabe. Tanabe, sorry. Yeah. As well. Like she, death was almost represented as a cat mm-hmm. to her as well because she had a, she had cat, a cat as that, a child. Yeah, her, and Her first experience yeah. with death was And then like, yeah. yeah. Oh, I want to switch to Tanabe real quick. And, okay. And speaking of parents, like. I love Tanabe's backstory oh, out of everyone. Yeah, she is the best. Any, she's yeah. she's honestly the best character in everyone because she's constantly. Oh no, I hate her character. I just. Oh like no, character. I love it oh, because she's... she is way too much of a hippie. But uh, no, but she, okay, when everybody's not a hippie, you need mm, a hippie, right? You need somebody in there mm. saying, "Well, why is it okay for everybody mm. to die? Why mm. is it okay? Like, you need somebody in there questioning. Mm. Why are you saying it's okay that we're just horrible?" people like we need to be better Mm. and like i love that like she had like she's not good in space like she Mm. was throwing up she would get sickness and all this kind of stuff but she's there for a reason she's like i understand that these things need to be cleaned up where Mm. and so that was her goal her goal was to clean up space whereas Mm. his goal was completely different like this was a stepping stone he wanted to use cleaning up space so that he could get his Mm. own ship or mars or jupiter or whatever sorry real fast Mm. i love that like any jerk off can get into space in this universe i did notice that not even just any jerk off it's super fast oh they're like oh uh i gotta go visit my mom in japan or i gotta go visit my parents in Mm -hmm. wherever she was from and then i gotta go to florida it's like just up and down really easy No, no look I know I don't like science stuff, but sometimes you need a bit of an explanation on this kind sure. of stuff. You can't just go up and down super fast to the moon. Well, they do. Well, okay, not to the moon, but they go very fast uh, to various places on Earth. But the very first chapter, which uh, is our backstory on Yuri, who unfortunately gets the shaft. Like, I would have liked to have learned more of him. But his arc is, like, over in the first chapter, yeah. which is... He and his wife were on a the first ever like um, space flight where they go into orbit. Maybe it wasn't the first ever, but whatever. They go into orbit and then they go. It's flights that go into orbit, so they're faster sure. to get to where yeah. you're going. Um, and then there was an accident in space, and then she essentially. Ended up dying. So he becomes the garbage collector because the the accident mm-hmm. they have was because something debris hit their ship, and right. that's why it whatever that and he was also hoping to find his wife because they never recovered her body her bo- so her body's it's out space there. garbage yeah. um i also think it's kind of ridiculous that they found her compass ah uh, whatever it's i just sometimes things are just a little ridiculous sometimes yes but sometimes you just do it because that's what makes it cute okay or whatever i mean i guess and i do like yuri's character but i I would have liked to see more with Yuri's character, but I did mm. not like that story. Yeah. Um, I actually think my favorite character might be Fee. Yeah. Because, I mean, she's I cool, but she's not my favorite. Well, first of all, shouts out for representation. Uh, she It's ambiguous in volume one, but by volume two, she's an African-American woman, or at the very least uh, mixed. Um, and the, she's in an interracial relationship yeah. and she's she's from the deep south of america like florida. i think no well she lives in florida but i think she was from alabama or mississippi because she has the whole backstory with her uncle oh right wasn't it north carolina maybe but it was like below the mason Dixon, yeah yeah it was definitely in the south yeah well no i think her mother was an attorney in north carolina okay but whatever they did it's, mention a lot of different southern states but whatever you don't get a lot of Sorry, I'm used to like, oh, there's a black man in this manga. Oh, well, he's clearly the guy that gets naked and is super well, strong. Well, okay, generally you know? speaking, he was very good on mm-hmm. like representation, right? Yeah. So the terrorists were from the Middle East because mm-hmm. they're 
countries were ravaged because there were no more oil. oil they weren't right. working with oil anymore. So they had become like rabid envir- yeah. environmentalists. Well, and more importantly, it wasn't about Islam or anything no, like no. that. It was about natural it was, it was a, It was about yeah. environmentalism. Mm-hmm. And so then you had, uh, like you said... Fee is American. Fee is American. But African American. African American. Yuri is Russian. Ukrainian. U- oh, that's right. Ukrainian. Yeah. They even had some Ukrainian mm-hmm. in the. And thing. you could tell it was outdated because they referred to it as the Ukraine instead of just Ukraine. Yeah. Um, so I've heard that the reason why people called it the Ukraine is that like Ukraine means corridor or something like that. Someone's going to fact check I that. I don't know. So it's like the corridor. but Okay. I don't know. Anyways, Ukraine is strong. Oh, sorry, sorry. Seinfeld. Random Seinfeld reference. <laughs> what? Okay. Never mind. There's an episode so then, where but the girl and Newman are playing uh, Risk, and like Kramer's like, "The Ukraine's going to fall." And this random Ukrainian on the subway goes, "Ukraine is strong," and he flips the Risk board. It was funny. And, okay, but then um, the woman on the ship, she was British. Which one? The oh. Jupiter ship. Oh yeah, yeah. The the girl. I believe there's a black woman on that ship too. The girl that gets naked. She did. Yeah. I don't know what to say about that. The she was gonna have sex with Hachi Maki or Hachi. uh, Okay, so and look, he had so much. No, 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 no. no, So okay, so they're on they're on a ship to Jupiter. That they get to that at the end. So you have a crew of a very. No, this is while they're still in training. They they're actually not on the. Oh, that's right. They're still in training. But anyways, you have a crew, and they're Mm -hmm. supposed to be very tight knit, and they they actually even go on secluded like Mm -hmm. you know long term training kind Mm -hmm. of things. So you have a lot of like sex. Or references to sex because mm. people are people. Oh, the dudes are watching porno all the time. Yeah. yeah. And I'm sure on their trips to Jupiter, there's more than just that. Wow. But she feels that what he needs is human connection. Mm. Right. And yeah. so to give him that human connection, she was going to have sex with him. But mm-hmm. it didn't happen. Babe, shouts out to uh, Yuki Mura, though. Because you're right. He did need human connection. And everyone else was mistaking it for sex. Mm -hmm. And all he ended up doing was like giving her a hug and then he fell asleep. And like it was that connection to humanity again that let him work through his like emotional trauma with his existential crisis and all he that. does so. he does similar things like that in vinland saga yeah. too where people just so, need human connection when they're mm. in when they're so separated from each other they yeah. need that human connection to, but shouts to out again. for not having them just knock boots which would have been the expected thing i mean so. i guess so yeah yeah gender equality come on now i don't know i don't that's nothing well to do with what was interesting is they were also like the crew knew what she was getting ready to do mm-hmm. and everybody was like all for it because they're like, we need to be a family. And I'm just like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but I, but so again, what they're missing is, is like family isn't necessarily sex. Family is bonding, mm-hmm. <laughs> but some people mistake yeah. bonding and sex. So going in a completely different direction. Um, I'm definitely interested to see what commenters have to say because um, shouts out to uh, Marguerite's manga, friend of the show. Um, she absolutely hates this book, and she refers to it as space trash. And uh, I, I definitely I don't will be know what, what I don't. Yeah, I don't know what that means. Space trash. Well, that it's trash in space. Like it's a trash manga, and it takes place in space. So space trash. Look, I give it a four, mm-hmm. only because I feel like. And I hate to say this because I would not want to read more of it. Mm. It's too short. Mm. Like, or it doesn't, it doesn't fill out the things that need to be filled out to make it a grander story like mm. Vinland Saga. Yeah. Um, there are, because if, because he was doing it as like an ensemble cast, you had Yuri mm. and uh, Fe, yeah. Fee, Fee, and you know, they each had their own side stories and it's almost like. Stop with the side stories, especially if it was going to be, quote unquote, this short, and just focus on one character mm. and have really, you know. My main problem with it was it didn't feel like it ended. Like, it just ends, because probably because he started Vinland Saga, I have no idea. But, like, I didn't get a good closure ending, in my opinion. Well, the closure ending is, I'm coming back. Yeah, I guess. I would have liked something more. Yeah, 
Yeah. Oh, oh, I completely forgot when I. Oh, by the it. way, I don't like this cover because it means absolutely nothing. Oh yeah, it's like a, this it's cover a is great. Yeah. I actually I kind of like this cover. This cover means nothing to the story. Yeah, I don't like it's it in his dream. But I like, don't like it, I, I forgot to talk about. I brought up uh, Tanabe and her parents, and I totally missed oh, what yeah. I meant to talk about. Like, I love the juxtaposition that he was like a death metal rocker turned windmill windmill repairman well no he, then, okay so you say oh she's such a hippie yeah. he's essentially a hippie like no, he was the nihilist death metal guy and he's no, like I, i'm I, gonna do like they were even claiming like wind wind energy isn't that much but i i feel better doing wind energy because it's clean and so that's why he was doing no no it. i guess what i mean is we never saw the arc but i think what happened was he was suicidal to some degree because a lot of Nihilist, his yeah because a lot of his uh, music was about killing yourself. What was it? His he, tattoo was like sexes. Uh... Oh, I don't remember. Yeah, he's all tatted up. Well, yeah, even though he, he looks like a sweet farmer, he's all tatted up. But his up like tattoo said something like inmate. "sex is pointless" or something like that. Yeah, that's what one of his tattoos said. But then he gets together with this cute teacher, and now he's just a family man. Like, and and she's know. adopted too. Oh, yeah, like they don't adopted. even have their own. Like they just have their mm, adopted child. Yeah. Um. So anyway, I, I know you were constantly comparing this to Vinland Saga, but I think the manga I was constantly comparing it to, which I think I like this manga better. Is two thousand one nights, which um, has a little more hard science fiction to it. Uh, it just has a little bit more that I tend to like about it. It's less slice of lifey. And first of all, Viz needs to reprint this. Like it was, I think, I think they printed reprinted it, or they did two print runs of it. They did this. 90 like this is from like 1990 if i remember mm. the uh copyright correctly i might give you a chance to speak and look for it but like there's like 10 of these like this almost looks like a single issue american comic um, one of the old thin graphic novels yeah and i think viz did a uh two volume omnibus of it like in the early 2k's but i would really like to see them come out with like maybe uh two uh omnibus hardcover editions it probably doesn't sell well enough to justify that but like i think this is a great sci-fi manga sci-fi classic that more people so what's your comparison then well no that it's just about humanity and exploring space and it's hard science fiction and things like that i'm just saying like if you like this because you like star trek or things of this nature i would recommend that you also read this because I think I like this slightly better than this. I don't know. If you, you like about... this because, or if you're interested in this because of like mm-hmm. the human dilemma, I guess is what you want to say it. Mm-hmm. It's done better here. Well, maybe. But uh, I'm just saying, uh, like, if this. I, I knew you were going to compare it to Vinland Saga, and I didn't want to feel left out. I wanted <laughs> didn't the want manga. To feel like... Well, I'm to just saying, like, we're it, coming so at it. So, because we come at it from different mm-hmm. points of view, we have other. Other stories that we feel did it better, I mm-hmm. guess is what you're saying. Yep. Yep. So this came out in 1990. Mm, that's, yeah. yeah. So, shouts out to Viz. Please reprint it. <laughs> so, anyway, do you want to have anything to say I in mean, conclusion? Uh, other than just read Vinland Saga? I, I mean, I... If you're interested in the explore, exploration, I feel that does it better. If you're interested in the parental human relationship, does it better. If you're interested in the existential crisis, this does it better. Mm. Like, this but is just better. Inter- but if you're interested in space, this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if you're interested in space. I mean, there are good points in it. And that's why I can't make it like a two or a three. Mm, I I thought you were going to give it a two. Well, no, because they're, 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 once... Once he gets past his, like, Mm -hmm. selfishness and existential crisis, it got a bit better. But Mm. it was so boring getting to that point. Even getting to um, uh, Fee and, like you said, her story, backstory of, Mm. you know, when she was a child and dealing with... That was more interesting, um, Mm. you know... Doing things... Because her arc was doing things because... 
the it's right. Because the right, yeah. not because everybody else mm. is saying. Oh yeah, we didn't even get into Fee's thing where she basically stops a war. <laughs> Twice. <laughs> Twice, yeah. Because she did um, it in the beginning too. That's true. Well, she doesn't technically stop the war. Well, America, they're saying they would have gone to war if what no, she. No, no, no. I think America pulled in America and. That's what I think the and, beginning was too. Well, no, the beginning one was a terrorist attack. I think it was too. Well, maybe, but like, no, no, the the second time was definitely another state actor, whereas the first one was just the Space Defense League or whatever. This is what I remember. I mean, yes, but the way I felt they were Look, I'm not saying it was that they were. I'm not getting into the That's how I read it at the end. That's how I read it at the end. She definitely stops one thing. Well, because they're really worried about this thing called Kessler Syndrome, which is if you make a big enough trash pile in space then no one can avoid it and then it just builds up and you the, just keep making smaller and smaller mm-hmm. bits of trash that you can't clean up mm-hmm. and you can't basically you'd be trapped on earth is what yeah, they were saying. because there would be like an invisible force field mm-hmm. of trash that would just tear your ship apart mm-hmm. if you went up there um but yeah her whole thing was like you do the right thing because it's right not because yeah well, because they were telling her, her you need to has, stop and you need to not do that. True. And her son has way too many dogs. Yes. Way too many dogs. I I didn't like the ending Having, where she brought home the dog. What? I'm like, you come on, be, you're a mom and you understand you shouldn't bring, mm. be bringing home You know what? I'm going to fire some shots. Because you, they were also living in an apartment. That's true. You don't keep that many dogs in an apartment. Yeah. I'm going to fire some shots out there. Even if you have one dog, you have too many dogs. <laughs> I, I I'll just, say it. I'll say it, cats forever. We're we're a cat family, but yeah. no, they they for an apartment they had way too way many, too many dogs. dogs. Um, Though the I, neighbor was mistreating that other dog. Probably, tell Peta. Um, I don't have anything else to say. I think we should move on to yeah. our next video previews. Mm-hmm. So we've got two videos ideas already finalized. Uh, the next one's going to be the haul, which. I like to have those come out at the end of the month, which lines up that it's probably just going to drop a few days after this one. Um, though recording it is going to be a challenge due to personal life stuff. Um, well, why are you looking like that? Mm-hmm. That's sus. Um, but then for our next regular release schedule, here's the thing. A, no one, No one ever has to feel obligated to do this at all. Like, we're adults. We we buy our own manga, but people just still just send us manga, and I want to prioritize those and get them read because people send them to us because they want our opinions, and that's what we're gonna do. So why don't you bring that uh, pile out there? So we got a stack of manga that people have sent us. Mm-hmm. So first of all, we have. Full Metal, Full Metal Alchemist. Alchemist one, which neither one of us have read that one. We have not. And we're both we're both going to read, read this, this one. one. And that was given to us by Strawberry Shoujo mm-hmm. on Instagram. Shouts out to her. Wait, wait, do the do, do the next. Oh, one. do the next one. Because she also she gave also us, gave us Kamisama Kamisama Kiss, Kiss which well, I, I'll, I'll be the one reading this. It one. was it was like a dual thing. Like that was for you and daughter, and that one was more for me. But mm-hmm. like I think we both want to try Full Metal. Yeah. I will not be reading Kamisama Kiss. <laughs> you know what? I'll tell you too. What if I. Get some time between all the reading. I'll try to flip through it. All right. Now, I'm not going to read either of these because I have yeah, that's, absolutely that's no fine. interest in But we have... Yeah, someone wanted my opinion. I have trashed Die Dark <laughs> so much in Q Hayashida that... Uh, oh, I'm trying to remember who it was. Uh, I think it was... It's one of our viewers. I believe her name's Amanda. I won't say mm. the last name. Um she gave this to me because she's like, I just have to get your opinion on it. <laughs> and she was like, you would read it if it was for free? Bet. I will uh, send it to you. So I was I like, okay. That. And now you're going to get an honest review. I even told her, I was like, you can do it, but just be prepared. I may trash this. But I might also say it was the greatest thing ever. Or it's just mediocre. Or it, anywhere in between. Well, because so many people thought I was just going to trash Yona of the Dawn. And I end up praising it quite a bit. So you never know. You always get honesty here. Not enough to read it more of the, it, though. And then, yes. And then we have... This is from the only 
uh, YouTuber we've ever met in real life, even though they don't keep up with their channel that much. Um, but a local person, um, why am I drawing a blank? Well, cause I can see his screen name, uh, Indie Manga X, but, uh, I forget. You can uh, just stick with that. Yeah. Indie Manga X. Um, he had this in his collection and he thought it would have a better home. Here, this is by the same uh, artist as uh, Crying Freeman. So that 90s uh, manga style, totally on my alley. Was thing. that that Samurai Sunrise or something like that? Or? Samurai Crusader, Sorry. Sunrise over Shanghai. Yeah. So, so is it a light novel? I don't know. That's, that's a light novel <laughs> title right there. I tell you what. I tell so you the, what. that will be, other than our hall, our next thing will be that. I don't yes. know if I'll get daughter to have time to try and read that, but maybe. Maybe. We'll see. We'll She's see. She's very busy with homework. Again, if you just recently got out of high school, let us know in the comments how much homework that you did. We're, well, we're concerned. She she picked up your slow reading. Like, mm -hmm. she is a slow reader. Like, yeah. I'm a fast reader. I can get through things pretty quick. Yes. You're pretty slow. She's pretty slow. And when she's reading for school, she's very concerned that she picks up all of the details in mm. case she needs it. So she's extra slow. Yeah. So. There we go. So that's it. We're going to get on out of here. Um, and we got to go remind daughter that Sonic 3 came on two cartridges.